<laughs> Hello and welcome back to the 2012 U.S. Amateur Championships. We're here at Strokers in Palm Harbor, Palm Harbor Florida. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with me today, but yes, uh, we're here to watch a match between David Rowell in the blue shirt and Matt DeRico in the tan. David is a former champion back in 2000. This, this promises to be a pretty darn good match. I'm J.R. Calvert with Inside Pool Magazine. Joining me in the booth here is Dan Cintron. Dan, welcome. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. Always uh, a pleasure, my yeah, friend. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, it looks like we've got a pretty good match in store. I think both these guys play pretty well. Obviously, David, a former champion. I mean, I know it was 10 years ago, but, uh, you know, he's still looking like he hit him pretty good. Hitting him pretty good, in it? Well, uh, winning doesn't happen by accident either. <laughs> 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 the balls just don't fall in by themselves. So, uh, you know, hopefully uh, he's, he's bad at 100, Scott Prater, Prescott Buckwell, table 13. I see he's opting for the head-on break and uh, came up dry. And just so you're familiar with the format here, we play both Match eight ball two, and Lincoln. nine ball. We start out with Washington. five games of eight ball Table and two. then follow it up with the necessary games of nine ball needed in a race to seven. And it all depends on uh, who wins the toss, and that determines what discipline they start off with. Oh, really? Yes, okay. it does. It so people there have been opting for uh, eight ball first because a lot of players, their uh, strength is nine ball, and they want to finish strong you know, with their anchor. So, uh, and that's, that's, uh, that's a good strategy, actually. This is a yeah. live feed. Yes, it is. I just had a fan stop by the booth, trying to figure out when we're streaming next and where we're streaming and all that good stuff. Absolutely. Well, we are streaming at uh, InsidePool.tv and uh, Ustream.tv and that's forward slash InsidePoolMag for our vanity channel name there. If you want to find out when we're doing new streams in the future, you can always go over and subscribe, follow us, do whatever it takes. There's little <laughs> buttons there. And uh, you'll know when we're streaming next. And well, there's also a uh, YouTube channel that you guys are on as well, right? You may be watching this on one of our YouTube channels because we rebroadcast a lot of these for video on demand through our YouTube channel. And that's youtube.com forward slash inside pool mag. So sure, uh, you know, feel free to subscribe there. You'll know when we put up all the matches as well. Very nice. You can like us on Facebook. We'd like that. <laughs> Well, David is off to the races here. He's got pretty much a shooting gallery. Uh, about the only thing he has to make sure that he does is he takes care of the 11 and the 14 in some order before he takes care of the 10. But I imagine he can probably use about every ball on this table as a key ball. I see him shooting the 11 up in the corner. Yes. The upper right-hand corner is his key ball if he's really, you know, on fire here. I foresee him going for the 14, back for the uh, 12, then taking care of the 10, and then 11. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, too close for comfort. Yeah, well, he's going to have to probably play safe down in this corner. Tying up the 5 ball. And just nicking the pen. So I don't think he'd really leave too much if he put this cue ball down in the corner. The eight's blocking the seven. Everything else is blocked except for the deuce all the way downtown. If he does this, I think he's inviting trouble. I think he's going the wrong direction here, brother. Well, you've got... Uh, you gave him all the choices. Right now, yeah. You're shooting a cue down into this corner, you only gave him one choice. One choice. And I think he fell for the old, it's dead carom here, but he could have pushed through that ball and had a different line. Absolutely. You know, so... I agree. Uh, mm, you know, that, that happens. That happens. Well, if you're unsure of a, of a certain stroke, uh, you, you could definitely mishit a shot and end up really bad real quick. 
Well, he, the, the thing that I didn't like about this is he just gave Matt every choice on the table. And if Matt knows anything about the game, which I'm sure he does because he's here, he knows to take care of the five as quickly as possible, but he didn't get on the six at the right angle. Yes. I mean, maybe the five goes up in the other corner and he's going to take care of business that way, but this four is a whole different set of, you know, problems now with the angle that he's he has. He's forced through, yes. Uh, the only ball I can foresee him doing that with is the seven. If he, oh. Now, if that goes in, that actually counts, guys, because um, you don't call your shots in the APA format of eight ball. Right. Well, he went down and took the five out. I don't think there's going to be much of a problem from this point. Well, I don't know what the uh, pocket looks like past the one for the eight ball. That's going to be a little issue. Side pocket or the corner pocket for the eight ball is the only two options he's got. Now, getting there is a different story. Mm -hmm. He will end up straight, pretty straight on the 10 after the shot with a little angle. I'm ready to be surprised. Yeah, I, I, I put a little bit more angle on this ball, and like I said, I would have went three rails down on the bottom side of this table so that I was shooting the eight in the side. He's in trouble. Yeah. That's the stretch. You have to power that shot way too hard to get over that side of the table. It's very hard to control that shot for precision for the side pocket or the uh, corner. Nice force on kicking the shot. And unless he gets a very fortuitous roll, he's going to give up, you know, the game. As they say, there's still only one thing or four things that can go wrong now on an eight ball. <laughs> uh, you know, he's supposed to run out here. Let's see what happens with the four. Well, I like taking care of the four right after this shot right here. It's going up. I come up there and take care of it right, right now. Here. It's my next shot. Yep. I'm not even looking at this, uh, the one ball. It's a good thing you took care of that already. Otherwise, I would not like uh, his odds. He's, I he's still don't like his here. odds. <laughs> he's shallow here. He's shallow. He can make this. There's a scratch there that he has to worry about. Sure. Um, you know, he might be able to open this up a little bit and change the angle with a little speed instead of spin. But let's see what he's got going on. He, he beat he it. Good. good shot. Cinch the ball. And Matt DeRico takes a commanding one nothing lead. Commanding. He's won every game. How could it not be commanding? <laughs> view of strokers. You guys are ever down in Palm Harbor, definitely stop in and see Jose and the gang. A lot of great players down here, too. Please visit, yes. Uh, they run a tight ship here. Very friendly. Always a smile. And I recommend a shrimp. <laughs> it's unbelievably good. <laughs> Been eating shrimp all my life. I've never tasted shrimp this good. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, i got to have it for my next meal. It'll probably be tomorrow, though. Right, yeah. You need to play today. Okay, nobody's going to be home. Okay, the five trickled in, but so did the cue. Ah. Found the hole. 
that's one thing about the break. I always try to <sighs> concentrate on not scratching because I don't mind giving up the table on a dry break. I don't want to give up the table and ball in hand. It's like the, the last game. Why give them all the options? You yeah. can't give them all the options. You have to take some away, folks. Uh, simple rule of eight ball. You've probably heard me say it before. And it's with any game uh, that you're speaking of. But my rule for eight ball is never leave the table without creating a problem for your opponent and solving one of yours. If you can just keep that up all day long. You'll be ahead of the game. You'll be The odds are in your favor. Exactly. You may not win, but they'd be in your favor. <laughs> well, it's kind of like people go, well, how do you play one pocket? And I say, well... You know, you can. Do you want the rules or do you want the the, the trick? Strategy, yeah. The yeah. The, tr the trick. Put a ball near your hole, and don't let your opponent see it. That's it. That's simple, right? That's simple. That, that's that's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to it. No problemo. Well, David is off to the races again, but he's got this eight ball that's a problem. And he's looking at coming into it right now, which I don't blame him. This could be a good shot. As long as he hits the, the 14 and goes down onto the 4. Okay, well, maybe not. Maybe he decided against it. There, it doesn't look like the 8 goes in this lower left-hand corner, does it? Uh, yes, I think it does. He's got some space in between the 14 and 8. We'll get that zoom feature worked out here in the future, folks. Meantime, we'll hit you with a couple of different views of this shot. There we go. Oh. Oh. Well, it didn't go. That's why he missed. He was trying to touch that ball. But he got lucky and created a problem. problem. Nine, twelve, fourteen. No, that's a ten. Yeah, you know, the I, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I keep mixing up the, uh, the the balls over here because, well, not because, but I, 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 I swear I um. If he sticks him on the back of the eleven here, that would have been a great shot. You could have tried to force. David to break out the 6-12. Very true. Anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's okay. I'm just mistaking the, uh, the colors of the balls. But I um, about three years ago, I had uh, eye surgery. I think they messed up something with my color recognition. <laughs> well, it's uh, we, we a lot of times people don't understand it's the color of the ball that we're seeing. Correct. That is the way the balls look. Off ca uh, on camera, yeah. There's, there's uh, some mighty powerful lights in on this stream for these folks. And it's so that we can give you guys the best possible presentation. It's one of the reasons why the TV balls, uh, you know, the four balls pink and the, uh, the uh, seven balls brown. Well, you get situations like this where we've actually been streaming where people go, well, I can't tell the difference between the four and the eight. And then the player actually gets up and shoots the eight and then realizes that it wasn't the eight, it was, it was the, the four. four. Or vi vice versa, you know, sure, shot, sure. The shot out, of, out of sequence. And sometimes the balls are that color. And this is a situation where these balls are this color. You're seeing the real colors. Right. And it's it's pretty tough at times. Especially if you only get a little slither of the ball like you do with that uh, 12 ball or whatever that is with the 6. It could be the 15. That's a 15. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you got an idea, but that's about it. Now that was about the best thing that he could have done. Because had he made one more shot, he would have had to start eliminating problems that his opponent has. His opponent has already said, I don't want the 8 and the 14 together. Doink. And that's a smart shot. Now what he's supposed to do is bank that 13 down here uh, I don't think he needs to tie anything up. He wants to start shooting his opponent's balls in if he can. 
but I'd say, like I said, he might want to bank that 13 down to this end of the table. Not to break anything up, but just to get it down on this side. If he breaks the 14 up, oh, he hit the eight ball first. Yeah, that's a ball in hand. That's a no-no. <laughs> was he just mooting the eight ball in to the stack so that there was no run? That could have happened. That could have been what, what he was doing there, guys. I don't know for sure, but it sure seems that it's not a coincidence to me that that eight ball is now tied up. I'm not sure if I like the shot. I prefer, well, if there wasn't any room, yes, but maybe shooting the six in the side pocket. I don't think I would have played a combination first there, but yeah, I kind of see what he was trying to do. And it might have been the only move. It might have been the smartest move. I was more looking at what is he going to do with the 7. Now the 8 goes by this 15. But now but he's he got a lot of traffic to get to the 7 here. He has nothing that's set in stone unless he goes rail first to make this 6 ball here. And that 14 ball is the size of a basketball again. True. When he runs out of this corner 3 rails. That ball naturally wants to go hot, just a hair high at the scratch. So let's see if he goes rail first or whether he's just going to draw this out of there. I don't think he'd go rail first. Rail first but with a bridge is pretty difficult yeah. to begin with. Mm, got a lucky roll. One in doubt. <laughs> well, I have another saying. Uh, I, I grew up... Uh, West End and High Q Billiards uh, in Elizabeth, New Jersey, and one of the things someone had mentioned, uh, when in doubt, sell out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the chatters used one of my favorite lines from Dodgeball. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. <laughs> Wow. Oof. Never a doubt. David Rowell takes game two. Yeah, I can tell you. Neither player is playing their game right now. David breaks the balls pretty good. He has some pretty solid. <coughs> Let the cue ball get away from him for a little bit there. Three balls going in. That oh, five looks like it side. goes up in the upper right hand corner. It could carry him off the nine and even maybe off the ten. But I'm sure that it that uh, up in the corner is his most solid shot. But if he hits it off the 10, he has to hit it about a million miles an hour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to hold the tangent <laughs> line. Yeah. He, he can't let that pick up any high cue. Yeah, spun that one up there pretty nice. He may be looking at that 5 off the 9 right now. If it goes, this isn't a bad line for it. If he can see enough of the five. He may not. He may be looking at coming up off this deuce right up into them. Nope. You know, I, I wouldn't have seen a... Oh, uh, well now it goes. Now it goes, now it goes down the corner. Yeah, so. yeah. It's just he's going to have to use the six as maybe his insurance, or he can come straight up off the seven, straight towards it. Wow, these are friendly pockets. Well, when you know that they're like that, you can really, you know, pretty much create your own angle, can't you? Sure. <coughs> you know, it's, sometimes it's not the fact that you, uh, 
you know, can make the balls easier. It's a, it's the idea that, hey, yeah, that ball can go, and I don't need to come with this in-between stroke. I can use a natural stroke and cheat the pocket. Mm -hmm. That makes the game so much easier. He's hit this one pretty perfect. He's just going to fall right down onto the six here. The five. Oh, the five. <laughs> No excuse for that one. Green and orange? Wow. <laughs> I think I might have to fire myself after that. Stop. <laughs> you better stop drinking that. Uh, what's, in, what's in that drink there? Coke. <laughs> and what else? That's it. Ice. <laughs> Tell him no ice next time. I think it's time. known as sleep deprivation. True. It's got a nice angle to come over to the rail for the uh, ape on the little right-hand corner. is going to make easy work of that rack. He used sequencing uh, to make sure that he cleared that rack. He knew that once he got rid of those other balls that the five was wide open. It's called it's thinking ahead, ladies and gentlemen. this game of eight ball we'll have one more game of eight ball and then we'll switch to the rest of the set being nine ball now has uh, inside pool streamed uh, how long has it been uh, inside pool been streaming the uh, championships we started last year okay And it's uh, you know, really cool that you guys are streaming this event. Uh, you know, it's nice to watch uh, you know the professionals uh, play, but um, also, if it weren't for the amateurs, you know, uh, you know, just being consumers of the game, uh, there, there there would be no success for this game. Right. So it's 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 about it's about all facets of the game and, and the players and. Well, it's, you know, the, the, the interesting part about it is most people don't realize is that without the amateurs, there'd be really no pros. True. That was a good shot. Came out really nice. A lot of people come up through the ranks. Well, it's, uh, the best way to say it is what makes a real good pro competition, you know, say like a Valley Forge, is the whole fact that there's a bajillion amateurs there that watch the pros. Absolutely. So this is a nice way to uh, give back. Yeah. Well, the APA really treats their players well. And I believe that the, uh, the, uh, the amateur level takes up about 80% of the market. Maybe more. Oh yeah, a lot more than that. There might be 250, uh, you know, real pro players in the country. Worldwide? Oh, in the country? In, in yeah. In the country, and then there's 270 the to 300,000 APA members. You know, so... And that's just APA. You, you don't <laughs> even talk about the, uh, the other leagues. Or people that there. don't even play leagues that really aren't pros. No, no. I mean, so yeah, it's... It, the, the amateur market is massive. The BBIA, the Bowling and Billiard Institute of America, generally every few years puts out a survey that says how many regular players there are. That number is varied in the high 30 millions to the low 40 millions. And generally, you know, as far as a 
participation sport. You know, we're one of the top ten consistently. Uh, we may have fallen because of, you know, bike riding and some of the X games and things of that nature that kids do. But Poker? Uh, poker isn't really what they call an, an exercise or, a, an act, you know, a sport. But it is an activity, and I'm sure that poker is one of those ones that has Taking a away. huge participation. Uh, you know, I can't remember really seeing it on the uh, the charts. Yeah, sweet. I miss that shot. Well, I think that was a safety. And I don't, it looks know like it. I don't know for sure that he played safe there, but it has all the ear markings of, you know, wow, look where that cue ball ended up. <laughs> the worst possible place for Matt. Oh, he, uh, he's got a shot on the 13 here. Plays it soft enough, he can. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, he lined himself up for a combination for the future. <laughs> he really did. <laughs> uh, you know, if you're David, I, I mean, you know that if he kicks at this ball, any any safety you play here, if he kicks at this ball, he's probably shooting again. Unless you're pinning between your object ball and the rail. Whitey to get legs. He got by, but I didn't like the way he hit it. Yeah. Wasn't his best stroke in the set so far. He's got an opportunity to break five and four here with the three. And uh, I suggest he does it now rather than shoot the six, then the three. Otherwise, he may not end up with a shot after the uh, breakup. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I also was going to say, you can play the 5 off the back of the 13, squeeze play. Oh, it Look went by. It went by, and he's got a shot on the deuce, and everybody's happy. It's funny how the uh, camera perspective can throw things off. Well, sometimes you just can't see that line. <laughs> yeah. You know, or you just can't see whether it goes by. Unless you're shooting. <laughs> Yeah, you have to be there. Well, which do you do? Do you do the six, run two rails onto the three, or do you do the three and draw up or onto the six? I go for the three first. I don't want to mess with getting out of line for the eight ball. I mean, uh, out of line for the, for the three. Otherwise, you could be on the other side of the eight ball. You overstroke it. You may have a, uh, it looks like he's pretty straight here. I think he's a hair above it. If he draws back, he's probably going to drift a hair towards the eight ball. Nice stroke. Perfect. You get that shot with a uh, one tip uh, of the low center. The stop shot type of stroke. Mm -hmm. Just have it drift back. Three to one. If you 
are just tuning in, you're watching the 2012 U.S. Amateur Championships. We're here at Strokers in Palm Harbor, Florida. Florida. I'm J.R. Calvert, and in the booth with me is Dan Cintron. Well, Dan. Yes, J.R. What do you think you, Matt's chances are at this point? You've well, seen him play a little bit. It's still early. Mm -hmm. It's still early in the match. He's only down by two games. An eight ball almost went it. Oh, look at this. Still has a chance. Wow. Well, the thing that I noticed about his game is he's not incompetent. He actually has a very, very decent stroke. And, you know, I think when it comes down to it, I think a nine ball is his best game. Mm -hmm. So I'm not ruling him out yet. But... You know, I think he needs to step up his game here to, you know, have a chance in this set. Absolutely. Otherwise, it's going to be either a close match or he's not going to be liking which end he ends up on. Right. Nine here. That uh. Well, okay. He made it for open ball. Now he can make this ball down past the eight. The thirteen. Right. But I do not like his chances on this this rack. I see two problem balls. Twelve. And only five left that are out of those two problem. I don't like his chances, and he, he's not going to be able to get to them off this first shot. So he's going to have two problem balls out of four. At this stage in Iraq, if I have not eliminated all my problems, I can I seriously consider whether I'm supposed to play safe or not. I probably would have looked at playing safe last rack or last shot because of the simple mathematics that five and that basically you're looking at five shots but you'd only have four shots and two of them would be problem balls. Well, Matt Diarico definitely has a shovel on his side because he keeps digging his way out of problems he's putting himself into. And when you're shoveling your way out you know, uh, oh, it's only a matter of time where you're just going to get to the point of no return and you can't get out of it. It's almost like running away from your problems. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll always bite you in the butt later. Yeah, stick your head in the sand. Nothing will ever <laughs> happen to you. I don't want to worry about those problems. Yeah, exactly. He's got the four in the side. Yeah, that was my choice. Two, six, seven, and five. Yeah, I think I might pull this ball back about. Oh. Huh. He can go this way. Just True. as easy. Six you two. had me convinced to go that way, and I went, wait a minute. Yeah, he's yeah. right. Six, two, five, seven. Seven being played on the side. It's just natural that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Connect the dots. Hopefully he can hold the ball. Oh. You know, when the tables are sl are. are, are rolling as fast as they are. Uh, rolling the ball is, is never the option. I always well, overhit it and come back into the middle table again. Yeah, I, one of the things that I always learned was those strokes where they were short and I could even roll from the bottom of the ball 
on this type of cloth and it would pick up the high cue that I needed to roll on the way there and I it, I used a lot of speed control techniques like that shorter strokes hitting and rolling from the bottom of the ball was probably the two biggest things that you ever had to learn when you were on the new cloth and David Rao finishes off the eight ball series four to one a four to one lead well if there's ever a time for Matt to wake up Matt is, uh, to now. come on it's uh, might be right around now How's the message board going on over there? Well, we got a lot of chatters out there. I want to thank everybody for showing up, by the way. Yeah, definitely. Keep us company. <laughs> Please use the share button and invite some of your friends. Absolutely. We'll get some more people over our way. And the uh, stream was shared on Facebook as well. So uh, feel free to share that link as well. Yeah, it opens up in a new screen, and Ustream does all the work. Just click a couple of buttons, and you Point invited and your friends. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting choice. I think the two will go by the four down into the corner. He can go through the eight ball and the six ball get down here for this three very nice perfect At this point here the real only problem is the six to the seven hey Baltimore bullet appreciate you sharing thank you Hmm. I don't like this. It's the five to the six. Yeah. This is the problem. He needed the angle. He needed angles. And this one got away. He's, got He's the on the wrong point. angle. Wrong angle. Now he has to force it. He can't even soft roll it because the eight's in the way. So now he's got to force it. He may consider the big draw, the big whip. Yep. Back in around the nine. Uh, he may consider rolling up and trying to get past the eight. I don't like it. Uh, he doesn't either now. Well, if he kicks this off the bottom rail and sticks it, and I don't hit this with left-hand English, I hit it flat. Mm. Oh. Oh, and he just got an unfortunate roll. But what you're trying to do there is kick a line straight through the seven ball and have that extend down to the second diamond. And if you use English air, it doesn't go to the second diamond. No. It drives it into the corner. <laughs> and David Rowell, I predict, is going to be two strokes away here from a five to one lead. On a race of seven. In the race to seven against Matt DeRico. Hitting nothing but net right now, folks. It's looking pretty good for David. See how David kind of hits these balls. Just run into them. Don't take any oh, chances. Mm. No. 
the two's funny, but I think he can roll the one in and kind of get kind of get a decent shot on the two. Kinda, yeah. He might be able to bank it. It's at that right height that where if you hit it straight across and you kill your cue here and you're shooting from the top end of the table across it, it'll just ride right up into the side pocket. Oh, he went for the bank. He went, he went played some type of safe there. Uh, <laughs> a bad one would be the best way say. To, to categorize that because he's left David right straight in the hole. Now he can bring his two out. No, he missed it. Oh. I mean, he hit it, but he missed it. He, he just missed wasn't going to get enough of it. Yeah. He's lucky he didn't scratch. Yeah, the, out in the chat room, we know that it does say Efren and Darren, but if you type in there that I'm watching the U.S. Open Amateurs or U.S. Amateurs Championship, uh, that'll probably help. We've updated that, but Ustream isn't updating for some reason, so we apologize for that. So sorry, so sorry. Think he's going to play the combination here? Well, you know, he could. I'm not going to say that it's the best shot. And I think he, he didn't adhere to that old rule. If you can't shoot the cue ball past the object ball into the opposite pocket that you're banking into, there's a kiss. NC Godfather. Oh, good question. Good question. One of our true patron supporters out there. Uh, when you bottom roll a ball, you use shorter strokes. You strike it below center and you roll the ball. Don't try and draw it. Don't get stuck into that idea that because you're hitting below center, you're drawing it. Just shoot it like you're following it. Use the same follow stroke. And what you'll find is that ball will travel slower because it slows down. It does pick up a little bit of backspin, but it holds the line very well because you get to push through the ball. You get to accelerate, so to speak, through the ball, but you create a slower cue ball. So if you're, you don't want to tap a ball and hit above center, that's a horrible stroke, and that, that ball drifts all over the place on the way to the object ball. But if you cue below center, even center ball, but a hair below center, and you roll the ball. Just try and roll it like you're hitting high Q. And you'll be surprised. That ball holds a line. True. Because it starts out maybe going 10 miles an hour. And slows down to 8. Where the tap, you might start it at 8. And it might be going 7.5 by the time it gets there. Because it's just rolling along. You've hit it above center. And it starts out to, at 8. Goes up to 8.5, 9. And then slows down to 7.5. And that little short stroke, you find yourself trying to quit your stroke. The cue ball will come off your tip who knows where. So cue a little bit Bad below center and roll. And you'll, have a, you'll find that your Craig touch Seale. will be great. Table 12. And that short stroke will always set Chris you free. Craig Seale, table 12. When in doubt, don't try and slow your stroke down below your normal speed of stroke. What you want to do is start to shorten it up. And just imagine that your hand is going to accelerate as it starts to, to move and hit a ball. That's the pendulum swing that accelerates by definition. And if you try to decelerate, not only will you start to use your shoulder and you know deteriorate the line of aim, but you'll also, ooh, uncharacteristic miss there. Oh. But what you'll do <coughs> is you'll, you'll decelerate through the ball and it'll come off at any point. And then you'll find yourself trying to hit really slow instead of short strokes that have a concise, straight action. You see, if I asked you to draw a straight line on a piece of paper and you did it real slow, it would be all over the place, right? There would be one point in there where I could say that you'd be off 10 or 12 degrees from the normal segment of the line. But now imagine that you take your, your pencil and just swipe it at your normal stroke speed that line could be straight. There'd be very little movement off of that. So that's, that's you know, 
simple mechanics, biomechanics, mixed with a little common sense and uh, a little idea of using draw to slow down the cue ball. Unfortunately, common sense isn't so common nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at this poor Matt. Oh, boy. Right in the drink. He's trying to do what he can here, but things are starting to go bad for him. And when they go south, folks, they can go south quick, and you'll find yourself being <laughs> part of the... Uh, uh, it'll be a, uh, what do they call that? Conspiracy? You'll yeah. be part of the conspiracy to defeat yourself? You'll be a willing accomplice, as they say. <laughs> and look at this. David's going to go right for the juggler and get on the hill with one stroke here. This is a way to drive the nail straight through the heart. You almost missed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing that uh, these are very forgiving pockets. Tell me about it. Well, yeah, I think Matt uh, wanted to play this set a little bit better. I don't think this is his best game, folks. I'm not gonna, not gonna lie. I think he he plays a little better than this, and I think he's. A little disappointed in how he's performed and I think he's even a little bit more disappointed in some of the roles that he got that weren't exactly in his favor but uh, he seems like the type of guy that'll look more at how he played than how the roles went so in the end that's that's the most important thing you know you'll never get better if you keep blaming it on roles you can't control the roles it's, it's not worth it and in the end they all kind of even out but you gotta, gotta I agree. control your own game. I totally agree. <laughs> in fact, in my match earlier, uh, I got some fortuitous rolls, and uh, and uh, there were some fortuitous, unfor unfortuitous rolls uh, against me. So, like you said, it, it does even up. Sure. I wanted to see what he was gonna do with this deuce. I wasn't sure if it passed the eight ball. I guess it does. You know, it, 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 I think he got top side of the pocket. I don't think he has the bottom side. Yeah. Oh, he's playing safe. That's a good Smart shot Smart choice. Good shot. Would you have um, opted to play the carom to the three? Because it was there. Now I probably would have looked, been looking at a safe, and I do generally look at a way to split the balls up. I'm usually pushing a ball to the second diamond on any of the rails, all six of them, right? Not just looking at it, you know, as a square, but I'm thinking, you know, that half of the table, if, if there was those balls like there were, the five and the three, or the eight and the three, I'd have been taking advantage of that, being that they were real close and everything could be worked. Agreed. I see a very simple safe here. Coming off the right side of the uh, two ball, leaving the two ball there. And right behind the two balls there. Just like Easy that. peasy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> well, at this point here, I think David's trying to see if uh, he's going to get another gift. The way things are going, it, it seems like it's only a matter of time. Mm -hmm. Matt's uh, putting up a good fight right now, but uh, you know David, he's he, he's he's just he knows that he's well the favorite at this point, and it's going to be hard to scare him. It's going to be hard for him to make a mistake too, because he's not really you know over. He's not taking a bunch of chances. Exactly, and there's no need to go for the run out here at all, especially when you're up 6-1. Just keep on punishing him and just uh, just get it over with. Mm -hmm. By all means. You do not want to give up air. So what do you see here? He's going one rail with a lot of English, inside English to come. And, uh, and this is the ball in hand opportunity 
the gift that David was looking for. Now, do you shoot the A3? That's the question. And the reason is, I don't the always... The A3, 3-8 combo. Oh, I didn't even see the 8 there. Oh, my goodness. Um, I do, and I leave the 3 just like that. I don't That's know what, the what you do. Because you don't want to go back up and down the table. You want to stay in one section of the table exactly. at a time. Exactly. That was that was why I brought it up is that you know technically you eliminate a lot of travel there and uh, you increase your percentage. Woo! Took it wide and. Oh yeah. I, well, I thought it's he was going to use you. Yeah, yeah. Now I knew that he had to get onto the bottom rail, and that's why I was saying is is we never really got into it. But I would hit the top side of the eight so that the three ball went to the side rail instead of the bottom rail. Correct. And Correct. I'd have been using a zigzag to get down here. I would have as well. Uh, the problem is what um, Dave did was he applied too much high cue, as you say, mm -hmm. and it basically hugged the cloth mm -hmm. and just hooked right into the corner pocket. Otherwise, if he just uh, hit it with uh, just a touch above center, it would flow naturally down the table with a little bit of English. Easily. Sure. Well, you know, and the other thing was is that he was, his natural point that he wanted to hit to create the zigzag was a pocket. He had he had put the pocket into the into the game, and now he had to pick an unnatural angle, and try and work with that. Agreed. So that's why I said, you know, you hit the top side, you know, you're going to hit the rail, coming off, and now you just control your angle off the rail. There, he was using high Q, and it it was, uh, you know, did well, not work out. Unfortunately, the way things are going for Matt, I do foresee another opportunity for uh, Mr. Raul I, to I win the match. I see this being a, 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 I, I see this being the beginning of something that he might be able to win a game or two off of, but unless he comes and starts to really put the stranglehold on David. Look at this. Look oh at this. my lord, did he just scratch? No. <laughs> oh, never a doubt. I thought Murphy was going to uh, intervene there. <laughs> a couple of years ago, <laughs> I used to go around saying, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Just a joke with people. And now a lot of people are saying it, and I got them saying it. But, yeah, it's the truth. If you think about what could possibly go wrong and dwell on it of course you will make it happen it will but you, happen. if you don't ever think about it you're guaranteed to make it happen just as much <laughs> so you have to think about it sometimes so you have to think what do i do then well you think about the thing that you do want to happen then see one of the things a pro does and if you listen to what i'm doing is when they evaluate a rack they identify the problems and then they immediately identify the solution that's that is how you get through a, a rack and nine ball or any pool game to be exact. Well, I was gonna say it doesn't apply to everything because I still haven't won the lottery. <laughs> yeah, you know I've got that problem too. But <laughs> you know I'm gonna figure that out one day. One of these days. <laughs> got the winning ticket right here. <laughs> one of these days, Alice. <laughs> you know it's funny and not a lot of people remember the show, um, but when Neil Armstrong died. Uh, it looks he like he's kick himself. us in. He, he can kick, kick it us right, in, off, right the, off the uh, eight. eight ball. Now you hit this with a lot of draw and hard and firm, and you want to draw it right up off of there. Now that he See, almost made it without hitting without the eight. It, yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, he did. He came off the top of the eight with a cue. Yeah. But I, I too would play it off of the eight and stick it right there for that five. I would have hit it and drew it right off the. Sure. Yeah. But uh, I was saying. Uh, when Neil Armstrong di died, the, there was a, um, you know, one of those little one-frame comic strips uh, on the newspaper, and it was uh, paying homage to him, how he was the first man on the moon, of mm -hmm. course, and it showed him and Buzz Aldrin on the surface of the moon, with the moon, moon rover right behind them, and all that you could really see was Neil Armstrong kneeling down to a woman who's lying face up on the surface of the moon. And the caption on the bottom says, oh my goodness, this is Alice Cramden. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, So one Jackie of these Gleason, days did finally come. One of these days, Alice. 
bang, zoom, straight to the moon. Good uh, shot here. Uh, no, nope. I don't think so. I thought he was going to get that point, but I think he caught the point and it slowed down a little yeah. bit more on the one I thought. Possibly. But here comes Matt. Matt says, I got this. I got this. He's just Never a doubt. <laughs> He's just Matt, when you are watching this, and I know you will, man, I'm telling you, brother, you got to tighten up a little bit. At times, you're you're out there right now. <laughs> but that's a message just for Matt. Yes. <laughs> that, but yeah, I, I I like the idea that you're fearless right now. Just go for it. Look at this. This he he isn't shooting like he's down six two. He's a, he's shooting like this is how he came back from six two. It'd be nice to see. I would enjoy that. I can think of one person that wouldn't. <laughs> oh no. Shake his hand and uh, thank you for participating. Wow. And there's the end of it. And I that's that's kind of what I'm getting at is that he was just prolonging he didn't, the end of No, he was just. Byron, he was getting loose, but uh, you do need to loosen up a couple of times on that, that type of score. But eventually, you got to tighten it down. You got to make sure this is the no mistake run out. This is where I, I've got a game. I'm gonna get my arm loose, but I'm gonna make sure that every time I do that, it's a controlled loose. Absolutely. I'm taking. I'm. I'm consciously making an effort to loosen my stroke up, but I know that there's no problems on the on the shots that I do decide to do it. He was doing it on times when there was problems out there waiting to happen. A flirt with the six ball in the, in the side, or the five ball in the side pocket, and eventually that one. But anyway, folks, hey, thanks for showing up. We're going to have another match coming right back at you. Richard Andrews versus former two-time back-to-back champion Henry Broat. We're going to have that for you very shortly. Thanks for showing up. want to thank the APA. want to thank Absolutely. those guys for sure. And Strokers. Strokers. For Paul Palmer. But most of all, Dan Cintron for hanging out and keeping me awake and, uh, <laughs> you know, hanging out with all you folks. Dan, thanks for showing Thank up. Thank you for having me again. And uh, I'm going to go take a little break before my match starts at 6. So, right. thank you. Thank you.